There's a pretty one, Ulysses. Hello booktube, I'm Sean the Book Maniac, welcome back to my channel. This video will be coronavirus free, fingers crossed. No big changes since my coronavirus update a week ago. More closures, this and that. So far nothing has affected me as much as the toilet paper shortage. And after three days of searching, I mean people are so stupid, not only Japanese people, I've been hearing similar reports around the world, Australia, Canada, people are hoarding toilet paper. It, after a three-day search, I found it, and here was my celebratory video, if you didn't see it elsewhere on social media. I've had a pretty good reading week. Started some interesting stuff. Finished some interesting stuff. No bales. The first thing I finished was James Baldwin's 1961 novel, Another Country. Was it 61? 1960 novel. And I love this. Five stars. It was not a perfect novel, but the things that were less than perfect about it didn't bother me at all. In places, the prose was slightly overwritten. And one character, I shouldn't say they didn't bother me at all, but they didn't budge me off five stars. Uh, there was one character, the bisexual character, or was he bisexual? I have no idea, but I didn't think his character made sense. It didn't seem like a real person. So when he fell into bed with people, I couldn't understand why anybody would want to fall into bed with him because he was only a half-formed character. All the other characters were incredible. The two African-American characters were some of the most complex and fascinating characters in modern American literature. And I found the story extremely moving and sometimes absolutely devastating. Now, there is a lot of spousal or domestic abuse in the book, and it was written in 1960. So if we judge it by today's standards, James Baldwin should have problematized it more. I think he did problematize it to a certain extent. The way that he treats domestic abuse in this book was is perhaps less problematic than in If Beale Street Can Talk, Could Talk, which I haven't read. But I just recently watched Heidi of My Reading Life's comments on that novel. And Brian of Bookish will be doing a review, so I'm going to defer to him for the rest. Check out his review. I think it might be up now or in the next few hours. And I'm looking forward to watching it. It was a fantastic buddy read. James Baldwin is the real deal, people. Breaking news. If you haven't seen the video Doris and I put up a few hours ago, this is a really excellent story from the Faber Stories. It's I think there was... This is now... Out of all the ones we've read, this is maybe the third or fourth that I didn't hate. So, Barbara Kingsover, Homeland, it's from her first book of short stories. It was her very first book, and she hasn't published a collection of short stories since 1989. Uh, this was fabulous. How delighted am I to be able to tell you this? For more information, we have a video available. See the link in the show notes. So that's all I finished. I was hoping to finish more, but, you know, life and sleep got in the way. On characteristically, I had a day off yesterday, got a ton of reading done, but I also got a ton of napping done, so didn't get quite as far as I had hoped. I have started three new books, finished two. One was a little short story, started three big books. I think as I told you last week, this is the uh, Russian-American writer Katya Apakina's The Deeper the Water, the Uglier the Fish. Buddy Read with Ange will be on the pages. Ange and I haven't checked in yet. We're doing a leisurely Buddy Read, 115 pages a week for... Is it three or four weeks? Three weeks, I think. So we haven't checked in yet, and I'm way behind because I was finishing other stuff up. But I have read 30 pages, and it's fantastic so far. I love the writing. The characters are so well drawn. Two preteen or teenage, one sister is teenager, the other one is preteen. And their mother has mental health issues and attempted suicide. And so they are being cared for by their father who they never met or hadn't yeah they never met they didn't know him he left when they were so small they had no memory of him and he's taking care of them and that sounds really melodramatic but the way that she's telling the story it's not it's beautiful and the characters of the two sisters are so different they have a real closeness with each other and their relationship with their mother is so different that the one one of them says to the other 
in an early chapter, I think we grew up with different mothers. And the way that that is done, it's powerful. It's a character-based novel so far that's just really working for me. And she's also playing with time because one of the sisters is looking back from several years later as an adult woman. And the other sister is narrating as of the now of when the mother was in hospital and they were being taken care of by their dad. It's really good so far. I hope it continues. I've been looking forward to reading it for so long. In other happy news, I have started this book about Ogal Romanov, the la uh, Russia's last grand duchess. And this is so good by Patricia Phoenix. So as I said last week, Olga was Tsar Nicholas II's sister, one of his sisters. And boy, did she have a dramatic life. The Russian Revolution hasn't come, but was she ever a scandalous princess? I love her. The writing is good. It's very breezy. It's not a scholarly work. It's working for me on that level. Patricia Phoenix is a good storyteller. And are there stories to tell here? She was having an affair for years with her husband's equerry. Is that how you pronounce that? Basically military assistant. And he lived in the house and she was having an affair with him. And her husband was so gay that he didn't really care. So there's much more than that in that's already unfolded. And... I studied Russian history as an undergrad and haven't kept up with reading very much about Russia since then. So this is really a trip down memory lane for me. Her grandfather, Alexander II's assassination, is narrated in the opening chapter with such gory details that I had never known. And I loved all that extra information. Thank you very much. Yeah, this is really good so far. It's a buddy read with Leah and she and I are both loving it. And if, if you didn't see my last week's Friday Reads, she and her husband, the guy she was having the affair on all that time, they eventually get married, and they fled from Russia. They ended up in Canada and became farmers. So I can't wait to read about how comparatively boring her life became in Canada as a farmer near Toronto. Actually, not far from where my maternal grandfather was born and raised. He's long gone. I would have loved to have asked him if he knew of the Russian princess who lived in his neighborhood. And the last one I've started, I'm only 10 pages in and I'm so excited about how fabulous those first 10 pages were. The Radetzky March by Joseph Roth. This is part of my Read More German 2020 reading challenge uh, organized by Mel and Britta. Translated from the German by Michael Hoffman. This is an Austrian novel and it chronicles three generations of a family during the Austro-Hungarian Empire and its eventual collapse. The opening scene is of the original guy during a war with France, and he saves the Austrian emperor from being shot during battle by jumping in front of the bullet and taking it in his shoulder. So he gets knighted, or whatever the Austrian equivalent of being knighted was, and it's so compelling from the very first page. Then he goes home to his father, who was a Slovenian, a poor Slovenian guy who had served in the military but didn't get very high up. And he's meeting his son, who's been not only knighted but promoted to captain because of saving the emperor, that his father can't hardly talk to him. Like he's There's a rivalry and a sense of humiliation and a sense of almost disgust that he feels for his son criticizing his son for being promoted so quickly and it was the last time father and son ever met and that's all I've read so far but it's so good I hope it continues Prita expressed some concern that it wouldn't be a Sean book but it sure is starting out that way so that's what I've started I'm really excited about what I'm still reading as any if you're paying attention and I don't know why you would be paying that close of attention you know that I've got a whole bunch of stuff that I've been reading for weeks and weeks I expect to have a glut of those finished to tell you about next Friday, and most of them are awesome. In fact, you know, because I bail when I don't like a book, pretty much everything I finish is a four or a five star read, because if it's anything less, it's not worth my time. Yeah, I have a bunch of potential four and five star reads in progress that I, uh, quite a few of which I hope to finish in the coming week. And in addition to that, I have one for sure that I will be starting because it's a buddy read and another if I can fit it in. The buddy read is for Memento Moriathon. This is Justine by Lawrence Durrell. It's the first of his Alexandria Quartet. And I will be buddy reading it with Adam of Memento Mori. We haven't done a buddy read just between ourselves. So I hope that, you know, we don't 
have any arguments or anything. I hope he doesn't make a video about me that makes me cry or anything. Or I hope I don't make one about him that makes him cry. <laughs> I'm really lo looking forward to finally reading something by Lawrence Durrell and reading it with Adam. And March is here. There's Irish readathons. I haven't looked into them at all. I'm not participating in readathons the way that I have in years past. I'm just kind of dip in and do a little bit, not even read the prompts or try to make a TBR video, anything like that, just to uh, dip into something during the month. So this is one I got last year for the Irish readathon. I didn't get to. It is Elizabeth Bowen's novel, The Last September. And I don't know why Vintage does this. They they don't put the full author's name on the cover. That drives me crazy. Set during the time of the Irish Troubles. And I have had some of you comment, I think when I did my Irish Readathon TBR video last year, that there was something difficult about her writing. So i am never read anything by her. And looking forward to possibly starting this this week, but getting to it sometime in March. So I haven't been talking for a whole long time, so let's have a look and see what I can shout out. And in fact, I want to start by cleaning up a mess that I made when I shouted out some booktubers and booktube videos the last time I did this a few weeks ago. And that is, I totally botched my shout out of the bibliotherapist. So let me do a real shout out for her. I don't I don't have time to watch anybody's channel regularly. I've got about three or four channels of my close friends that I try to watch all of their stuff. And then everybody else, I dip into once a month or hopefully a little bit more often, but some often a lot less than that. So I don't pretend to be following anybody as often as I used to. I just am prioritizing reading books so that I can tell people about what I'm reading. But the bibliotherapist is great. She's a Canadian booktuber and she reads a lot of Canadian fiction and I don't, so I learn a lot about what's new and coming down the pipes. The mistake that I made, and I just kind of got off on a tangent and never got back to telling you all what a lovely booktuber she is, was that she had a video about a Canadian television reality TV show about books that I hate, and I'm not going to <laughs> to say any more than that. So please check out The Bibliotherapist. I enjoyed her video a few days ago. Was it her January? Yeah, it was her January book haul. So she put it up late, I guess, because I just watched it a few days ago, where she was going to be rereading my favorite novel of all time, Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. So that made me happy. And she also talked about indigenous Canadian writer Richard Wagamese that I'm a fan of, although I haven't gotten along with his fiction so far. Need to try some more of it. What else has been put up? Amy from From the Dusty Bookshelf has a new video, which I have not seen, about a book by J.M. Barry, And it was her that introduced me to J.M. Barry. I mean, I knew of Peter Pan, and I think I read it years ago, decades and decades ago. But I read his book memoir about his mother because she talked about it on her channel so I want to check that out in fact she's got two here one's Barbara's wedding and the other one's the new words so those are two very short videos oh no she has three they're all less than four minutes long about different J.M. Barry books the third one is the old lady shows her medals that's a really enigmatic title uh, Marie of MH Books is back and she has a unboxing video from the book resort. I don't know what the book resort is, but she's a hoot. So whatever she's talking about, it's worth your time. You know I don't follow prize lists the way so many booktubers do. So I'm not following the women's prize, other than that whatever's on the short list is usually the worst of the batch, and the winner is usually especially terrible. I'm hoping that it won't be that way this year, but I just kind of ignore it. Other than when a booktuber puts out a reaction video, I see Jasmine's Reads has a video out, and I know that Greg of Supposedly Fun put one out, and I haven't watched those yet. And then the Stella Prize shortlist came out today, and Jacqueline of Six Minutes for Me has a reaction video to that. And I loved Charlotte of Tired Mama Tries to Read's video today on the occasion of World Book Day, and it ends with her reading a bedtime story to her little boy, Idris, and it's just so cute. Bookish North has a book haul from Hay on Y. That's the book town in, where is it? Is it in Wales or Ireland? I forget which, but so she went there. I want to see what she got. Oh, Bookish's review of Another Country is already up. He did a threefer, Milkman, Another Country, and You Never Forget Your First. You Never Forget Your First. 
is by Alexis Ko. I don't know anything about that. So I loved Milkman. And as I said, we buddy read another country. So that will be linked. I love Roz's channel, Scally Dandling About the Books. She's becoming one of the ones that I don't want to miss any of her videos. I haven't been following all of her Cromwellathon reaction videos because I just haven't had time. But she and her daughter, and her daughter is Tilly, and I've forgotten Tilly's channel name. It's not linked here, so I'll put that up on the screen. But they do the final, I think it's the final check-in on Cromwellathon. I'm not sure if it's final. I haven't been following it. I have ordered The Mirror and the Light. It hasn't arrived yet. I will not be reading it anytime soon. I'm not in any big hurry to read it. I wanted to get it and then follow some of the early reactions on BookTube and elsewhere and then read it, you know, early next year or something. Hannah's Books has a uh, Wolf at the Door March TBR and ideas for her Virginia Wolf month of reading, which sounds pretty interesting too. That's what I've got. Thanks for watching.